Okay, um, I do apologize for this video being split. Um, I was recording a bunch of other lectures for another class before I started recording 13.5 and I think I was recording too long that um, Zoom just kicked me out, okay? Luckily it was at a spot where I was right about to talk about something different. Um, so you don't get like a video really truly cut right in the middle of um, where I was. I was about to just with my next breath start talking about um, taking the derivative of the surface area and it just flashed and turned off. So anyway, um, I'm back, figured out what was going on, but I did realize that the video had stopped right before I mentioned this. So we're gonna go ahead and continue right from where we left off and we're going to use um, this as our surface area formula, okay? So um, we're gonna go take the derivative of that. So we're gonna set it up just like we did here. We're gonna take ds dt. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to do ds d little r, d little r dt plus ds d capital R, d capital R dt plus d um, ds dh and then dh dt. Um, and so let's go ahead and try to work this out. Now, I did notice that over here you do have pi out in the front, so I am going to multiply everything that I get um, times this pi, okay? Now here it goes. So when we take the derivative of s with respect to r, what we're going to have to do is we do have a product and both of these uh, factors have little r in them. So we will have to do our product rule here. I'm not going to worry about pi because I have it out from the whole thing. Okay, it's a constant multiplier for the whole thing. So then what I'm going to get for this first um, ds dr, what I'm going to get is the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. I'm gonna decrease the power by one and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So I'm gonna to have to bring down the two, um, multiply by the derivative of little r here, and then the derivative of h with respect to little r is just zero, okay? So this is what I get for the chain rule of this part. Then the second plus the second term or the second factor multiplied by the derivative of the first factor. And the derivative of r plus h with respect to little r would be zero plus one or just one, okay? So that's all of ds dr. Then I'm gonna multiply it by dr dt, okay? Now I'm gonna move over and do my second term. So this is the same plus sign here. And now we're gonna do ds but of capital R. So similarly, just like the other one, we're gonna have the first factor times the derivative of the second factor, decrease the power by one, and then multiply by the derivative there. I get two times R minus R, and the derivative of capital R is one, and the derivative of little r is zero. Okay, then plus the second factor times the derivative of the first and the derivative of R plus R with respect to capital R is one plus zero or just one. And then D capital R DT. Now I definitely don't have enough room here. So I'm gonna go plus and then now I'll do DS DH. So this is also a constant multiplier. So I'm just gonna rewrite that guy there but I do need to take the derivative of this because it does have an H in it. So bring down the power, decrease the power by one, and then apply your chain rule. So the derivative of this term with respect to H is actually zero. And then the derivative of the second term with respect to H is two H, okay? And then um, that's it for this one, but we do still need to put DH DT. Okay, now here's where it starts to get tricky. Now I am gonna cancel this two with this two. 
um, over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. This two is gonna cancel with that two. And I wanna make some notes here before I start plugging in values, okay? So I'm gonna try to use some colors. Now remember that R minus R is going to be 25 minus 15, which is 10. So everywhere I see an R minus R, like right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. All of those places I'm gonna be plugging in 10, okay? Similarly, if I do the same thing for, um, trying to get some more colors. If I do the same thing for R plus R, that would be 25 plus 15, which is 40. So that means this value is gonna be 40, this value is gonna be 40, and this value is gonna be 40, okay? Then we also know that H squared, I hate using yellow, but that's all I got right now, um, is going to be 10 squared, which is actually 100. So I see this guy, which would be 100, this guy would be 100, this guy, this guy, and this guy, okay? This one would just be a 10, right? And then we also know about our dr, dh, and dt's. So we know that dr, dt, and d capital R, dt, both of these guys are four, okay? And we also know that dh, dt is 21, okay? So this is gonna be 21. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in all of those values. And what do we get? We get pi, and I forgot to close my little braces. That's the end of everything that gets multiplied by pi. And so I have pi, brace, and then this pink thing is going to become 40. The one half is already canceled. Then in the brackets, I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have 10 squared plus 10 squared with the negative one half exponent. R minus R is 10 times a negative one plus over here, I'm scoot it over a little bit so you can see, we're gonna get that bracket 10 squared plus 10 squared raised to the one half times one, it's not gonna change anything. And all of this, with a big bracket right there, times this four plus another big bracket and R plus R is 40. That's gone. We're gonna have 10 squared plus 10 squared to the negative one half. That two is gone. R minus R is 10 and times one doesn't change anything. Plus 10 squared plus 10 squared raised to the one half exponent times one doesn't really do anything. And this whole box is gonna get multiplied by four. And I've run out of room, but I'm gonna keep going over here. So plus, big box, um, 40. And I didn't cancel the twos here, but this two can cancel with this two. Then we get 10 squared plus 10 squared to the negative one half times 10, close the box, and then times 21. And close the big brace. Okay, so this is what I get. Now you can use your calculator. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna keep working with this until I get my exact answer. So I am gonna have pi. And then let's see this term. This term is going to be, I am going to have to distribute this four to this term and to this term. So I'm gonna end up with 40 times 10 times negative one times is four. And I get negative 1600. And then in this brackets, it's actually going to be 200 raised to the negative one half. Now for the next term. The next term, I'm just gonna have plus four. My pen ran out of 
pencil just now out of lead. Let me grab another one in the meantime. Okay, so we finished all of this with the four. Now this four is going to get multiplied there. So I'm going to get four, 200 again, but with the positive exponent plus. Now for this term, we're going to have 40 times 10 times four, which is another 1600. And then 200 to the negative one half. And that's for this one. Then I still have to distribute the four here. So that's going to give me four, 200 with the positive one half exponent plus over here, I'm going to get 40 times 10 times 21. And that is 8,400 and then 200 and to the negative one half exponent. So all of these gave me the coefficient and then this is 200 to the negative one half exponent. So let's keep simplifying this. Well, this term and this term are the exact same thing, but one is positive and one is negative. So they're going to cancel each other out. These two terms are the same. So I'm gonna have eight, 200 raised to the one half plus 8,400, 200 raised to the negative one half. Now, if I type this in my calculator, it's going to tell me um, a decimal. And I cannot type in a decimal. I have to type in an exact answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these into their radical forms. So this will become 8 square root of 200. This will become 8400. Zero, zero, but because of the negative exponent, the square root of 200 will be at the bottom of the denominator. Now you can simplify this a little bit, okay? This is eight times 10 square root of two. So eight, four, zero, zero over 10 times square root of two. I get 80 square root of two. Um, this 10 will cancel with that, but I am going to rationalize my denominator. So I get 840 square root of two over two. And then these reduce. So I end up with 80 square root of 2 plus 420 square root of 2, which is actually just 500 square root of 2. So you can type in, oh, I'm so sorry, didn't move my paper up. So once I rationalize this, the square root of 2 squared is 2. Then these reduced to 420. And then these are like terms. So 80 square root of twos plus 420 square root of twos equals 500 square root of twos. And then I'm just gonna enter in my answer like this. So let's see, 500 pi and then square root of two. And it should, should <laughs> be correct. Okay, yes, we got a green check. So again, I apologize that this video got split, but I definitely wanted to cover this one because this one was pretty, pretty intense, pretty difficult, okay? Um, I don't want you to just write down my derivative and then plug in your numbers. I want you to actually practice taking this really giant long derivative because we're not gonna get a break from that. And that means that it can happen on your test. And so I don't want you to bypass taking the derivative out of either one, laziness, or two, desperation, because you're running out of time to do your homework, whatever the situation may be. But I don't want you to take my derivative and then plug in your numbers. I want you to actually practice finding that derivative, because if you don't practice it, you're not going to be versed enough to perform it adequately on the test, OK? So please make sure that you are able to take these more complicated derivatives on your own and get the correct answers. Okay, but that's the end of this section. So I will re record the next section soon.